Today's theme of joy shared, let's pray. Father God, pour your spirit into our hearts that we would rejoice in your word of favour and grace and mercy to us in Jesus. Fill us with joy, Lord, so we can share the joy of Jesus with others. Amen. Well, today I've got a, an opportunity for you to share some of your joy stories, perhaps. And here's a few questions, and I invite you to share on one of these. You could share on more if you're able to, but here, here's some suggestions. Can you recall an experience of joy as a child? Or what has been one joy milestone in your adult life? Or what brings you joy in this season of life? Feel free to explore that with a friendly kind person near you. Any one of those afterwards, but it's good to share stories of joy, isn't it? Like it makes you feel joyful even just talking about them. Uh, I'll submit to you that when a married couple uh, are respecting their first child, their family and friends rejoice with them, particularly if it's been a long wait. Or when students graduate, they get together with family and friends to celebrate the milestone. Or when we've been working hard at a long-term goal and it's finally achieved, we want to tell some people so they can share our joy. The wonderful thing about joy is that we actually need to share it with others. And even Jesus gives a few examples in Luke 15. The lost coin, the lost sheep, and the lost son. What happens when those things are found? Yeah. Hey, rejoice with me because I've found my lost da 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 da. Joy needs to be shared. And we see this in our story today of Mary and Elizabeth's festival of joy. It's been said that a, a sorrow shared is a sorrow halved and a joy shared is a joy doubled. I think that's pretty much on the money. What do you think? In today's reading, two pregnant women share their joy and both are carrying miracle babies. Elizabeth was way beyond her childbearing years and Mary has never been intimate with a man. And yet both women rejoice knowing that the sons they bear will have a special place in God's plans for his world. And friends, there are three reasons why we can share in their joy today. First, we can have joy in God's favour. We talked about this last week, remember? The angel Gabriel brings a good news story message to Mary. Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. Six months earlier, the angel Gabriel told Elizabeth's husband, Zechariah, that she would bear a son and to name him John. And the angel says, he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. Like the prophet Elijah, John will call the people of Israel back to the Lord, preparing them for the ministry of the Lord Jesus. Now, friends, both Mary and Elizabeth knew that God did not choose them because they were any better than anyone else or because they were sinless. Mary's song points to God's initiative. From now on, all generations will call me blessed for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. She's praising God for his actions, yes? Likewise, Elizabeth's response, she starts off by saying, hey, the Lord has done this for me. In these days, he has shown his favour and taken away my disgrace from among the people. Friends, isn't that exactly how God comes to us in Jesus? Not in judgment, not in condemnation, but with favour and kindness and grace. Friends, somewhere on your journey, one or more of God's messages, messengers has told you the good news of God's favour. How Jesus lived a perfect life for you. How Jesus gave up his perfect life for you 
when he bore the blame for all your mistakes and failures at the cross so you could be forgiven. And how Jesus rose to life again, breaking the power of death and giving you a hope and a future in God's family forever. Friends, no matter what you've done or what's been done to you, God extends his favour to you in Jesus. And friends, none of us is too bad to receive it. And none of us is so good that we don't need it. Like Mary and Elizabeth, you and I can receive and rejoice in God's favour to us in Jesus. Amen. Okay, the second way we can share in their joy is by believing God's word. If you ever think about after the angel left Mary, what sort of things might have gone through her mind? Oh, did that just happen? Was that real? Did I just imagine it? Was it just a dream? But then she acts on the message. A few days later, Mary hurried to visit Elizabeth. She believes and she goes. She acts on the message. If she didn't believe the angel, she wouldn't have bothered. Yes? She wouldn't have bothered. She says, oh, that was interesting. I thought, oh, I'll go back to sweeping floors. But no, she goes to see Elizabeth. She believed the message. And as soon as Mary arrives, she sees that Elizabeth is great with child. And while still in his mother's womb, John jumps for joy at the presence of Jesus, who is also in his mother's womb. There's something wonderful and mysterious and awesome about that. And filled with the Holy Spirit, Elizabeth confirms the angel's word to Mary. God has blessed you above all women and your child is blessed. Why am I so honoured that the mother of my Lord should visit me? Did you catch what Elizabeth is saying here? Mary, the child you are carrying is my Lord and my God. Mary believed and acted on God's word to her. And a week or so later, God confirmed the word of the angel through the prophecy of Elizabeth. Application. Well, friends, how is it with you and me? Do we believe and act on the truth that God has already made known to us? Or does it go in one ear and straight out the other? And I'm preaching to myself here as well. Does it go in one ear and one the other? Or do I actually act on it? In our culture, we ignore a lot of what we read and hear. And there's a few reasons for this. We are overloaded with information. We're bombarded with so much. We don't have the capacity to process it all. Second, our lives are so busy that we have little time and space for reflection. You know, the time where you sit down and go, oh, I wonder what the most important thing is for me today or what's the most important thing on God's heart for me today. We don't tend to think about that very much because we don't have time. We're busy getting on with the next thing, the next thing and the next thing. And third, we don't like being accountable to anyone. Our Western culture keeps telling us, do what you want to do, be what you want to be, yeah. Yeah. In other words, it's all about you. Friends, if we take that attitude into our walk with God and have this attitude to what God's telling us, well then, we will reject his guidance and truth if it doesn't mesh in with what we want. And we'll stop caring about what's on God's heart for us. And you know where we'll end up? We will end up feeling lost and empty and joyless. A few reflection points for us to ponder. Do I want to know God more personally and intimately? And if so, 
well, then am I making space for God's word in my life? Am I making some space for that because I think his voice is important? I think I need to set some time where I can just be still and, and listen and take that on board. Second, am I allowing God to confirm his word by acting on it? You see, when you put it into practice, then you tend to find, oh, he's right. It works because God's telling me to do it. God doesn't sell us a lemon. God's always telling us his truth and we confirm it when we live it out and, and act on it. And third, how are my beliefs and values, attitudes and actions being shaped by God's word to reflect the character of Jesus? Because that's who I want to become more like. Friends, Jesus urges us to keep asking his Father for the Holy Spirit. And by gosh, don't we need the Holy Spirit? We need the Holy Spirit to renew our hunger for God's word and our desire to live it out because it's really easy to hear and not do. Friends, the word of God keeps us relationally connected with God and gives us wisdom to live well with others. Who doesn't want that? To get on with others, to live well with them. And through God's word, the Holy Spirit nourishes our spirit, it broadens our perspective, deepens our faith and grows us in Jesus. Through God's word, the Holy Spirit replaces fear with faith, anxiety with peace and despair with joy. And who wouldn't want that pile of stuff? By believing and acting on God's word, Elizabeth's words to Mary will also be true for us. You are blessed because you believe that the Lord would do what he said. Amen. Third, we can have joy in God's restoration plans. In human terms, both Elizabeth and Mary face some significant risks. I mean, Elizabeth, old woman bearing a baby, it could kill her. Mary could be stoned under suspicion of adultery. And yet these women rejoice in playing their parts in God's restoration plan. Elizabeth bears a son, John the Baptist. What was his part in God's plan? Hmm? Preparing, preparing the way for the people of Israel by pointing them well, calling them to repentance and then pointing them to Jesus. What was Mary's part in God's plan? Her, her son and God's son, Jesus, would be the saviour of the world. Making it possible for everyone to come into a right relationship with God. Application. Friends, when our life plans are at odds or inconsistent with God's purposes, we miss out on the joy God wants for us. Living for our own selfish goals or ambitions, it diminishes or robs us of God's joy. We need to live for something or someone greater than ourselves. And inside of us, there's a yearning and a need to play our parts in God's story for his world. God invites you and me to celebrate and share the love and good news of Jesus with others. And it happens when you gather here today, this morning, to praise and worship God and to help each other find strength in him. It happens as you take a genuine interest in people, listen to them, encourage them, pray for their salvation and seek opportunities to point them to Jesus. It happens when you go about your daily work with a servant heart, desiring to bless other people through your work in Jesus' name. It happens as you nurture your children or your grandchildren or your great-grandchildren or mentor other people's children in the Christian faith. How? Well, by telling them the Bible stories of what God has done in this world by sharing your stories of how God has been faithful in your lives, by teaching them and showing them how to pray and helping them grow in their relationship with Jesus so he can bless the world through them. 
It happens as you give generously to God's kingdom work and to the poor in this world. That's God's kingdom coming here on earth as in heaven. And it happens in using the gifts God has given you to serve others, in showing hospitality, in giving a hug to someone who is grieving, in greeting a child by name, or in forgiving someone who has hurt you deeply. Friends, may God give you joy in Jesus and may God double your joy time and time again as you share the love and joy of Jesus with others. Amen.